When I first saw the five backpacking gear items we're looking at today, I thought they were at best gimmicky and at worst, just plain garbage. We're gonna look at what these items are and how they've surprised me by not only not being garbage, but becoming some of my favorite pieces of backpacking and hiking gear. It's easy to see why I may have been skeptical about these sandals from Mayfly Ultralight. They look like they're just cardboard and string that a five-year-old may have been able to put together, but they're actually very durable and well-designed. They're made with a polypropylene plastic for the base, high durability nylon, and then they're reinforced with silicone pieces throughout, along with some grippy material, grippy tape on the bottom so that you're not slipping and sliding around. Mayfly makes two different versions. We have the thong style one here, and then the classic sandal one here. I used the classic sandal one here for 36 days on the Great Divide Trail, really using and abusing these around camp and then using them as my main footwear when I was walking around town on my zero days. And they're still going strong. I'm gonna still get another summer of these, no problem, but I'm really excited to also try out the thong versions because it just adds a little bit more stability, I think, for your foot. What's awesome about these is that they allow you to bring a camp sandal or a piece of footwear to wear around town if you're through hiking while only having a weight penalty of 1.7 ounces. These were definitely a surprise for me for 2021 and I've been loving them. I've always used hand sanitizer and biodegradable liquid soap like camp suds in order to wash my hands and clean things around camp. So when I came across this powdered soap from Pika Outdoors, I was a little bit skeptical about whether it was actually effective as a soap and then whether it was worth switching over from hand sanitizer and liquid soap in order to wash my hands and stay clean on trail. First of all, it is effective as a soap. I'm not a chemist, but I did do a lot of research into what makes soap effective for cleaning things. And all of those components are found in the Pika Outdoors formula. And then if it is effective, why would I bring it over hand sanitizer and liquid soap? And there's a few different reasons that I want to tell you about. One of the best things about powdered soap is that it doesn't freeze. If you're hiking in fall and winter and the temperatures are getting below freezing, then having a powdered soap is way better than having to deal with liquid soaps. I've also found that powdered soap is a lot less messy than liquid soap. You don't have to worry as much if it does leak all over your bag. And then it's a lot lighter. You're taking out all of the water weight that you'd be carrying with liquid soap and just dealing with the powder and then adding water once you're in the field. Peak Outdoors is biodegradable, which is awesome, but like with all biodegradable soaps, in order to not impact the environment, it's recommended that you still wash your dishes and wash your hands with soap away from water bodies like rivers and lakes. Without even realizing it, almost all of the gear we're looking at today is available over at the Garage Growing Gear website, and they happen to also be the sponsor of today's video and a nice surprise for 2021. Garage Room Gear helped expose me to some new brands and gear that I probably wouldn't have ever seen if it wasn't for their website. So thank you to them for sponsoring this video as well as supporting me over the last year. It's been awesome partnering with them on a bunch of different projects and videos and something that I really enjoy is partnering with companies that I believe in and I actually use. I started off buying some pack liners and freeze dried meals from them but I've since bought a ton of really awesome gear from some really cool cottage and ultralight brands. My favorite thing about them is that they're a one stop shop. I can go fill my cart with a bunch of really cool products and then get it shipped to me all in one order. If you guys follow the channel, you know that I love Garage Growing Gear. They're my favorite backpacking and hiking store. So go check them out at the link in the video description. What's wrong with the little bag that comes with your tent stakes? Heck, why even use a little bag? Why not just use an elastic band to hold them all together? Well, this stake sack from All Man's Right is not much heavier than elastic band and way better. The key is all in the opening. The All Man's Right stake sack opens a lot wider than a traditional stake sack, which makes it easier to put stakes back into the bag, as well as dig into the bottom in order to find those little stakes like mini groundhogs when they're sandwiched in with a bunch of larger stakes. When I'm a little bleary eyed and taking my tent down in the morning, it's actually crazy how much nicer it is to have a wider opening to put the tent stakes back into. They've also designed the opening of this very well. It's really easy to close it up as well as open it, just all around smooth process. I've always hated these little tubes of toothpaste, so this next item won't be that much of a surprise, and that is toothpaste tabs. So these are just little pill-like tabs that you chew up, and then you can brush your teeth with them, and they're super effective. I'm not gonna get into the fluorine debate, but what's really nice about unpaste tabs is that they come in options with fluorine or without fluorine, so you can have whichever option you want. Let's go over the reasons why toothpaste tabs are better than the little tubes of toothpaste. First of all, the toothpaste tabs don't freeze. As the temperatures get colder, traditional toothpaste is gonna to start to thicken up and then become essentially unusable. You don't have that problem with toothpaste tabs. As well, with toothpaste tabs, you can bring as many as you need. 
I put them into these little baggies here and just take as many as I need for a trip. And this was super useful on my through hike of the Great Divide Trail. I was able to put just the number of toothpaste tabs I needed for each resupply point instead of having to put a little toothpaste tube that I may or may not have needed to resupply with. There's also less waste. You get two months of toothpaste with the little tabs here, whereas you don't get nearly as much with the tube and it's more waste with the tube compared to the recyclable packaging of the toothpaste tabs. I'm a pretty serious guy. So when I saw these novelty Dyneema bags from Space Bear Bags, I thought to myself, where's the performance gain? How is this better than just a plain Dyneema bag? Is there any evidence like there is with pink titanium spoons that more color is better? But I realized happiness can come from more places than just lower weight and better specs. And every time I take out this poop moji bag, I smile and laugh a little bit and just packing it into my pack brightens my day. And I love the design of the first aid kit and it actually makes it a lot easier to find and grab and throw into my pack, whether that's my day pack or my backpacking pack. Both these items are super popular and they're out of stock really quickly. So make sure to sign up for the notification feature on Garage Growing Gear's website if you find them out of stock when you go to buy them. I'm gonna post a link to a video right up in the corner there that I really think you should go watch. It goes over all of my favorite expensive backpacking gear and then provides comparable and functional budget alternatives to that gear.